Hey everybody, welcome back to Starfire Gaming. I am Sir Joseph and this is Warhammer 40k Rope Trader. We finally made it back to um, the Cronus Expanse. We have uh, several people we have to talk to about quests before we go to um, to um, other planets. We need to talk to this guy right here, the High Factorum. We need to talk to Yurliet, who I believe is down here. And we have to talk to the Vox Master right there. So let's go talk to Yurliet first. The Dark City released us from its thorny embrace. The wounds of the body will heal. But what about the wounds of the soul? Cruderock fell, and its demise shattered the fragile lives of countless children of Assyrian. Scattered across this part of the galaxy, hounded by the monkey, pursued by the dark cousins, imprisoned by the servants of she who thirsts. Yurliet's hand brushes against the crimson stone embedded in her chest plate. Hatred is strangling me like a snake, and fear is coursing through my body like a burning poison. For the path I chose is leading me down the roads of failure. I can neither hold back my grief nor rein in my anger. And yet, I am powerless to stray from my path. Pay no heed to my fleeting wrath, Anantok. When the will slips away, the soul trembles with rampant emotions. But I will resign my heart to meekness, for there is no other way a marked outcast can help their fellow Eldari wandering in the dark. Yurliet stifles a brief sob and casts a grief-stricken glance at you, and then her face turns impeccable once again. Many terrible things happened in Komorak. Are you all right? I found myself in the Dark City after following the twisted roads of truth and lies. And although the truth blossomed like an ugly bud and scratched my soul with its thorns, I did find the answers to my questions. Those who come back from the dark of the webway will never be the same. But it is we who change while the surrounding world remains imminent. This thought gives me strength. Yurliet's words fall quietly, almost weightlessly. Kudrak suffered an unenviable fate. I'm sorry your world is lost. I have no need for your sympathy, Elantok. Besides, Neither Monkey nor my dark kin found the decaying remnants of Cruderock. Perhaps all is not lost. Perhaps we may yet bring back what has been taken. Yurliet's gaze dimly wanders the bridge, but the corners of her lips twitch traitorously upwards, and her features soften. What will happen to the seer now? Clendil chose to stay on the Lilithon together with Muaran and the rest of our kinsmen. Perhaps it is for the best. The stars in this part of the galaxy are hostile to the children of Asurian. So where does the path of the outcast lead you now? On the trail of a monkey called Caligos Winterscale. Even a worm may harm a wounded tiger by bringing infection into an open wound. And the wounds of my people have been bleeding ever since Cruderock's demise. The spirits of my kin need a poultice, a hope, not the executioner's sword already poised to fall. I'd like to ask some other questions. 
You may try. And there's no questions to ask. Alright. Yeah. Looks like we probably need to go to uh, Winter Scale, which was kind of where I wanted to go next. It's the closest of the mis two mis the two story missions that we've got. All right, so the High Factorum is right here. We'll talk to him next. The High Factorum, Janus Denerek, greets you with a cool smile and the merest hint of a bow. Pleasure to see you, Lord Captain. How may I be of assistance? So a lot of these things are just talking about him. We're not going to worry much about that. But this is probably the one they want. I wish to hear news about the Protectorate to keep appraised of things. Yep, that's what we need to do. We discovered a world that is home to a long-abandoned colony founded centuries ago by one of your predecessors. A ship was sent there carrying several thousand colonists who were to restore the derelict settlement. After the ship entered its system of, destina its, its system of destination, contact was lost with it, and its fate remains unknown. Perhaps you might want to investigate the disappearance of that vessel personally. In addition to that, your lordship, pirates have presented a serious problem for your domain. For centuries, a group of bandits, headed by a ship called the Elusive Contempt, has been raiding cargo vessels on their way from the Protectorate's most plentiful extractia. Their ability to deftly escape pursuit by patrols has allowed them to operate with complete impunity. The pirate's flagship has been spotted in a nearby system, your lordship, Captain. It is significantly powerful to handle, or to finally chase down the brazen scoundrels and bring them to justice. The Astropathic Choir has received a series of alarming messages concerning the Narmer 4 system where a dangerous space anomaly has supposedly manifested itself. Its nature is unknown, but the fabric of space within the system is reported to be curved and unstable. It is said that any ship entering the region disappears without a trace. I believe we ought to be prudent and steer clear of that system. The Factorum hesitates as if unsure that what he has to say is worthy of your attention. There is something else, Lord Captain. The ship's astropaths had caught echoes of alarming messages. Unidentified ships abandoned by their crews have been spotted in several systems of the Expanse. It may only be a rumor, but those who encounter them have gone missing. That is all, Your Lordship. Da -da, you think? Do, 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 All right. That's all of that stuff there. I shall await your instructions, Lord Captain. So the rest of that looks to be just like, who are you? How did you get here? All that kind of stuff. Um, Said we needed to talk to this person. Uh, but it just looks like it's your standard who are you sort of things as opposed to. Oh, I can't go to the journal here. Uh, let's pull out. Bunch of rumors. Don't 
Let's find the door. Rat hunting. Uh, Aaron's latest news. Yeah, it says them, but when we go to talk to this guy, it doesn't really have any of that. So we're just going to go ahead and not talk to him and go to the map. Elusive plunderers are here. One Ray Road is there. So there's a couple of these rumors. We're still going to make our way here. We're going to go into um, Langren's Belt for the elusive plunderer. See if we can find this guy or gal. Got pirates, plundered void station. Let's go see if we can get the pirates here. Oh, we didn't even look at what our ship had, the upgrades on our ship. We'll do that after this fight. A chase is ensuing behind a stained glass window of the bridge. Several pirate raiders are trying to catch up with a cruiser, fruitlessly firing salvos at it with from their macro cannons. The officer of the Augur crew report, they're chasing the elusive contempt. It's a legendary pirate flagship that has been plundering cargo ships across the expanse for several hundred years, masterfully evading patrols and escaping unpunished with the loot. Shelby the Protospectular, the elusive contempt's captain, addresses you via Vox. In a cheerful, almost affectionate voice, he thanks you for the high-grade resources mined by the Von Valencius Extractums and also for your invaluable assistance in his escape. As soon as Shelby finishes his speech, the elusive contempt swiftly enters the warp and a powerful salvo intended for his vessel explodes against your void ship shields instead. They dare to attack a rogue trader? Prepare for battle! I'm not sure who attacked us. Kind of sounded like it was one of our people trying to shoot the elusive guy. But no, it's the elusive contempt right there. 380 hit points. That's a big, big boat. Seven of them, holy smokes. Eight of them. What's this back here? I uh, just probably... Like all of our uh, crew people, for the most part, are not here. All right, well, let's do something to these guys. Oh, just out of range. Okay. Let's 
go up to here. Go start frigging it! Go start frigging it! are adding to them. Ah, oh, our sword frig is getting hammered. Sword Frigate's gonna make it. <sighs> so many torpedoes. Alright, well, we don't have. This is the only one we can hit, so let's go ahead and hit it. Let's disengage just to find another day. Did did he just get away automatically? down. I don't think there's anything in range of this thing. No. Um. Guess that's it. Let's see. Do we got anything here we want? I don't want to get too far up because then it gives this guy a chance to hit us. So let's call it there. I mean, those torpedoes right there are going to finish off the... Oh. That'll probably do it, though. Took a lot of hits for us, though, that's for sure. All right. 
Gotta be wary of all these torpedoes. See if that gets us in range of some of our lances. Still out of range. Like, let's get out of here. Hopefully, we can finish it off before it has a chance to get out of here. I think we're going to side slip up this way as well. A little more distance between us and those torpedoes. Oh, I probably could have fired torpedoes, speaking of torpedoes. Salvo of torpedoes. We want to take care of this guy. All right, I think that's it. I think it's just these two ships and their torpedoes. End phase, is it not? Evidently, it's not the end phase. Trying to shoot our torpedoes. Yes, we shot several of them. broadsides or anything, but it will still hit us in the weak shield. There we go. 
Well, we got rid of its little guys. We got some scrap. We got some ancient machineries. Looks like we leveled up. Plundered Void Station. I wonder if that's the thing that we've already been in. But let's look at our ship. Godsbane Lance. Sunhammer Lance. Long 3 at 30. Long 3 at 21. I think those are the same ones we've had. Yeah, those appear to be the same things that we've had. All right, let's do upgrade. Do all hands on deck and maximum overdrive. Okay, there we go. Over centuries, old history, the flagship on Valencia's dynasty has undergone many modifications to learn new combat maneuvers, develop officer's posts, so we can upgrade one of these? Or is that just everything that we've gotten? I mean, that's just everything that we've taken. Oh, yeah, we can go up to level 13 on the ship. That's pretty cool. All right, posts. I don't have anybody in these posts. All right, that's amazing. Persuasion, that would be Cassia. Demolitions, that would be Argenta. Shieldmaster, that would, oh, that by far, Pascal. Master of Maneuvers is Athletics. That would be Abelard. Warp Channeler. That's Heinrichs. Master of Etherics. Yearliette. All right. Upgraded, upgraded, upgraded. Upgraded. We've not used swing around once. That's one where we go forward and do a, a UE. Um, all right, we've got 728 pieces of scrap. That's empty, there's nothing we have can go there. So 605 will upgrade, that still leaves us over 100, that will be sufficient. Uh, 
uh, we don't have enough to upgrade our RAM. We don't ever RAM anything, but we never you never know, we might want to eventually. We are almost level 8. Well, let's go check this out. Let's see if this is something we've already done or not. Going with our standard crew. And this is one we've already done. This this is the one that we did and went through these these things and fought all those guys. So let's go ahead and go back to the point ship. All right, we're gonna go here and check this place out. Lord Winterscale appears to be hunting down our dudes. Lord Captain, an urgent message. Our enforcers have arrested a dangerous saboteur who attempted to gain entry onto the bridge. This incident may be worthy of your attention. You see, both the saboteur and the circumstances of his capture are rather strange. You cannot tell if Vidris sounds baffled or worried. I think it would be reasonable for Magus Pascal to take a look at him as well. What is so unusual about the saboteur and the way he was captured? The thing is, Lord Captain, the saboteur is most definitely a tech priest. He found his way aboard the ship and penetrated all our security systems with staggering ease but his ability to communicate with machine spirits and the combat potential of his augmentations are extraordinary. Nevertheless, the enforcers managed to capture him. During the arrest, the intruder, he offered no resistance at all. Instead, he asked for an audience with the great machine spirit. When he realized that the enforcers had no idea what he was talking about, he asked to meet with you. I considered it necessary to apprise you of the situation. This infiltration of a rogue trader ship operated by authorized engine seers cast doubt on my tech comrade's ability. If he is indeed my tech comrade, that is. Regardless, I request permission to communicate with the captive. Very well, I will speak to him. Understood, Lord Captain. The saboteur will be brought to you. Probably wants to talk to Nomos, is my guess. Let's see what cool things this leads to, or horrible things this leads to, as the case may be. Slowly it loaded. Inch by inch, step by step. There we go. The group of servitors, whose movements are suspiciously well synchronized, stares at the towering prisoner. You do not need to hear them speak to recognize Nomos, who has seen fit to attend the interrogation. Is that the guy right there? I think that's Pascal. The captured man, if he can be called that, looks positively gigantic next to the enforcers at his side. Deadly looking metal gleams dimly beneath his faded crimson robes. His hands are folded obediently, <coughs> pardon me, and his mechadendrites are perfectly still. I greet the master of this vessel, cathedral, and offer my humble apologies for this unbidden, unbidden intrusion. My apologies to you as well, brother. The interloper inclines his head in the direction of the frowning Pascal. Well, he's polite, if nothing else. Then the prisoner turns slightly and looks straight at Nomos, observing 
observing servitors. And of course, I must beg forgiveness from you, great spirit. It was not my intent to desecrate your temple. Before I accept your apologies, tell me who you are and why you infiltrated my ship. My name, if it matters, is Asclepius, formerly a compu computator general of the Cognizance fleet, now a, liber a Liber recluse with the status of Malatek. Malatechs are exiles whose ideals have not crossed the line of heresy yet have come close to it. They are removed from the fleet structure to give them a chance to see the folly of their ways and prevent sedition from spreading. Pascal's voice sounds unusually alarmed. All of that is trivial. My past is nothing but a set of archive data. My lost status is a part is a part replacement string in the long chronicle of the cognizant fleet. I came not as a priest as the bleh. I came not as the priesthood's messenger, but as a faithful disciple of the most holy Amarnat. My brother once served as the engine seer prime on this ship. Ascalipius gestures around him revelantly. He was an, ad an adherent of the school of discontinuing the cycle, as am I. It has spread that far. It is difficult to discern Pascal's emotions from his tone. I know that my brother perished, but before he did, he sent me a message that told of the journey of a journey embarked upon by Theodore von Valencius, a journey through a dimensional gate, an artifact more ancient than humanity itself, and toward worlds unknown. The blessed Amarnat was with her. There, upon these dark worlds, he witnessed a great miracle, the birth of a miracle spirit of incalculable might. My brother believed that this spirit then fell a slumber within this ship like a child in a cradle, not responding to lowly pleas. That was the purpose of my pilgrimage, to reach the ship where my brother died, the ship upon, upon whose decks the blessed Amarnat had walked, and prostrate myself before the great spirit. Amarnat traveled on this ship? Yes, he did. My brother's words on this were clear. Years ago, Amarnat was of rogue trader Theodore's inner circle, before their ways parted. Tell me about Theodora's journey. My knowledge of it is scarce. My brother suspected that his memory, along with the memory of all of all who might have known the details had been purposefully modified. He saw it as a sign that the journey had revealed a great truth, and there were those who did not wish to see that truth brought to light. All that he conveyed to me was that Theodora had reached worlds unlike any the people of the Cronus Expanse had ever seen. There, she unearthed a great treasure of technology, one that Amarnat had the privilege of experiencing. What do you know about this great spirit? It is a great miracle, the omniscient breath, meant to help us discontinue the cycle. It was born of the treasure that Amarnat and Theodora discovered upon the Dark Worlds. Yet, even a being so glorious needs attendance and guides. 
and as long as the Cognizant's fleet is ranked but racked by schism and my brothers and sisters suffer defeats without end, there is no one to aid the spirit. That is why I came here. Does the name Nomos mean anything to you? Nothing. He has not come to know us yet. He will if you let him, Ignatius. We know, we sense that his words are about us, that the story he has told is our story. This looks like it's gaining more and more form every time we talk to uh, Nomos. You are strong, yet you let yourself be caught. I took a vow that I would never inflict physical harm upon lay people. The Omnisci grants us the power of the true flesh for a purpose other than damaging the frail and blind creatures that are all who have not yet tasted his knowledge. I have made my decision regarding your fate. Whatever it is, I will accept it. As will I, and yet I plead that my brother be shown leniency. His story initializes thought. We ask you to keep him for us, Nomos's servitors speak up suddenly in the faintest of whispers. Your actions have caused no harm, and so I shall not harm you. You are free. You may stay on my ship if you so choose. I could not ask for more. All I wish is to remain in these halls and observe in reverence the great spirit's deeds. Let the cycle be discontinued. No most servitors turn their heads to you and nod all at once in what can be interpreted as a gesture or as an expression of gratitude. See, it's changed again. Now it's the normal. This is somebody who doesn't have a, a thing where before it had that kind of almost a, a look of a body. All right, back to the map. Permission to speak, Lord Captain. The Augur crew has registered activity in the orbit of Quetzal Temer one of the worlds of the Winterscale dynasty. According to the report, the Emperor's Vow, the flagship of rogue trader Caligios Winterscale, is positioned over the Southern Hemisphere. Vigdis's report is suddenly interrupted by Idira's anxious voice. Lord Captain! Lord Captain! This is it! Right here! So very close! The quiet whispers! They won't stop! They keep buzzing in my both my ears that my little door is somewhere on this world. I mean, I want to say what little door, just see what she says, but... We already know what little door, but we're going to say, what little door? No experience points from that, okay. The door for my visions, the one I told you about, remember? Nothing major, just my last hope for salvation. All right, calm down. I need to take care of Winterscale's flagship right now. Of course, Lord Captain, I dare not interrupt you any longer. After a brief hesitation... 
Vigdis' voice comes through the hissing of static once more. Allow me to repeat, Lord Captain. The Emperor's Vow, the flagship of rogue trader Caligos Winterscale, has been detected in the orbit of Quetza Temer, one of the Winterscale words. What are your orders? And this is all you have to report? No, 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 of course not. Vigdis's vox crackles nervously. The officers were about to extend the range of the wave emitters. In minor, in minor turn of the chrono, the Vox Master reports again. Lord Captain, the data you has been updated. Quetzaltenemer's largest contents suffered from a moderate Xenos planetary invasion. We also discovered the wreckage of several Aldari vessels on the periphery of the system. Another vessel crashed into the world, causing minor seismic activity. A dozen shuttles of the Winter Scales Dynasty are patrolling the space directly above the crash site. I presume the Xenos hunt is in full swing, and the hunter has already caught scent of its prey. Throw and take me! <clears throat> Beg your forgiveness, Lord Captain. The Emperor's vow has detected the empowered emanations of our augurs and is requesting permission to initiate Vox Transfer. What would you have us do? What information does the Librarium have on the Winter Scales flagship? For a while, the Vox broadcasts only the clicking of Vigdis's metallic manipulators. The Emperor's Vow is a cruiser carrying up to 120,000 crew. Length overall, 6,000 meters. Beam, 1,000 meters. Estimated time of servants of the Winter Scale Dynasty fleet, several millennia. It is known for a fact that the ship has undergone many modifications including a replacement of macro weapons for long-range laser batteries and short-range macro batteries. And, I'm afraid this is all we know, Lord Captain. Incredibly ancient, incredibly complex, incredibly unpredictable, and extremely demanding when it comes to resources. Had I been one of the high-born, though unofficial rulers of the Expanse, I would definitely have chosen this void ship for myself. The Librarium of House Orsilio also held records of the Emperor's Vow. Its most famous owner, to be precise, Sebastian Winterscale, a fledgling rogue trader of great promise. It is not known how Sebastian acquired this ship, but Lord Captain Winterscale used it to traverse the Maw and find a new home in the Coronas Expanse. Hail the Emperor's Vow. It will be done. By the grace of the machine spirits, the air gradually fills with discordant noises until the Vox Master flips the last tumbler on the cogitator's panel. The Emperor's Vow sends its greetings to the glorious ruler of the Von Valencius dynasty. This is Erberecht Abdeef, his lordship Caligios Winterscale's Vox Master. Who has the honor of speaking on behalf of his lord today? The booming voice fills the air, startling a few officers on the bridge. However, you feel that Erbrecht Abdeeft's ostentatiousness, ostentatiously confident tone is meant to hide his concern. Not even the void of the cosmos can hide your anxiety. Erbrecht, now speak. By the gold of the throne, the scions of Von Valencius are shrewd to a man. The Vox Master loudly clears his throat, looking for the right words. 
You see, Lord Captain had yet another heated argument with the esteemed Incendia Chorda, and he had a very good reason for his displeasure. I dare not discuss his lordship's affairs, but I can divulge that we set out to protect the dynasty's rightful Demesne from the invasion of the profane Xenos. This is how we arrived here at Quetzaltenemur. There is no better hunting ground when you need to cool off your head, I believe the Lord Captain said. We easily crushed the pathetic mockery of a fleet that was laying siege to the unfortunate world. Of course, most of the Xenos fled, but we did reduce a few of their ships t to chum for the Void Beasts. The Vox Master laughs cruelly. An Eldari fleet? That means there are more Krudrak survivors than I dared hope. A secondary Vox channel transmits Yurliet's voice, laden with desperation. Elentok, I, I must go to this planet to find them, to try to save them. I will help you find your kin. Yurliet breathes almost inaudibly and her shoulders relax. And I am grateful to you, Elentok. Something tells me the story does not end here. You see, your lordship, one of the Eldari ship crashed into Quetzaltenemur, so the Lord Captain chose to descend to finish off the elusive play, prey, but he has not been able to find his way. He has not been able to find his way out of the local woods for over thirty days now, and this concerns me greatly. Anticipating the next question, your lordship, no, I am confident Lord Captain is still alive. His body and spirit do not e break easily, and besides, he is accompanied by Wharton the Grey, who would sell his soul if that happened to keep the Lord Captain out of harm's way. May Assyrian protect his children. We must halt the frenzy of your stellar rival, Ellen Tak or else, by Isha's tears, my subject will not escape retribution. I will try to convince Caligios to seek a peaceful resolution to this conflict. Hurry up, Elentok, before there is nothing left to decide. How could you not find your master over the course of 30 days? We say as we were trapped in um, Kamarog for Lord knows how long. Things are not so simple, your lordship. The Lord Captain last contacted me from the landing point currently right under the Vow's belly. We lost about a dozen shuttles and several hundred scouts in the first days of the search, all of whom went down to Quetzaltenemur and never came back. Our shuttles were are relentlessly sweeping the airspace where our people perished. This may this this way we were able to reduce the search area to just a few thousand kilometers, which still does not change the fact that people in the thicket are disappearing without a trace, and something is jamming the Vox communications. Was there anyone else with Caligios aside from this Wharton. A full hunting party consisting of half a hundred hand-picked enforcers and his lordship's personal retinue, naturally. So what do you want from me? A generous favor in return for a generous favor. Find Lord Captain Winterscale on... Quetzaltenemur and bring him back to the Emperor's vow. I swear by the Golden Throne that I will convince him to side with you in any conflict that occurs in the next hundred years. After all, I am allowed to make deals on the Lord Captain's behalf while he remains unavailable.
Very well. I need more allies like Winterscale. Your Lordship, I bow before your courage, your courage on behalf of my of the Winterscale dynasty. The data transfer decree has been signed. My crew will send you the landing coordinates. The God Emperor's grace shine upon you for many years to come. The Vox Master's thundering voice falls silent and the machine spirits terminate the communication between the flagship of the two great dynasties. All right, and with that, we're gonna call it. Thank you guys for watching, I do appreciate it. As always, like, subscribe, and comment. I appreciate that as well. I have been Sir Joseph, you guys are amazing. Until next time, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you later.